So before we go camping, uh, we've got to do a long road trip because number two child is moving and so we're going to help him move and it's a big road trip, a 4,000 mile round trip and part of what we want is a cooler. So we're building our own ice chest kind of thing out of these styrofoam containers that we got different products in over the years and two of these stacked on top of each other are a little bigger than our ice chest. We have one of the 70 quart ice chests that are supposed to be good for keeping the ice for five days and under normal circumstances it does a great job. Been real happy with it. Well this is going to be twice as thick and I think it'll work for what we need. So uh, this is what we've got so far for the first one and then we'll have a second one stacked on top. Uh, I'll show you what we've done so far and how we're working on the second one. So here's what we've got so far. So I'm taking one of the boxes and cutting it down so that I can use the end pieces to put in one of each end. That'll double it up. That gives me three inches uh, thick everywhere. And I've got the bottom part way done. And so that will be three inches thick on the bottom, three inches on all the sides. And then we're going to just have a single top. So it will only be an inch and a half thick. However, we'll be stacking the next one directly on top it. So it'll be three inches between this box and the next box. So basically it'll be more than three inches and it'll be cold in the next box. And then the next one will be the same way with a double top on it. Let's get them cut and put together. So I've already cut down the one side. So we'll be cutting both sides of this and do that to both ends. And these will end up on the inside of the other box. Let's go ahead and get that cut. Got it almost through. I think I need to change blades. It's not exactly perfect, but pretty close. And so that will become the side of the next layer. All right, that's the one side. And I'll do that same thing to the other side. And I'll be gluing these together with foam. So that's step one. Pretty decent. Shave that down a little bit. On these side pieces, I just need to cut the top portion off because it needs to fit inside the container. And then the bottom will be on the outside, of course. So we need to cut it this direction. Same on the other side. Now, we'll put that one aside for now. We'll start with the two long end panels. Those become the new extra sides. And I can kind of tape those in place for now. 
to make sure that I have all the components I want and everything looks good the way I'm after. Okay, that one has a few dents in the bottom, but it looks like a very solid container still. You can see now I have three inches on each side. And now these will get carved down this, uh, the inside radius. I'll take that off and, and carve it slightly the other way so it'll fit on the inside radiuses of these. Each of these containers have a slight taper to them, of course, so that they could be molded and then ejected out of the mold. If they were perfectly straight, it would be very difficult to get them out. So they have a slight taper. And that taper when you're molding is called something, and I can't remember what that's called right now. Anyway, so I need to slice a little bit of this off so that it can fit down in there. And I should have remembered that, but I forgot. And because I'm going to uh, glue it together with some foam, it doesn't really have to be super, super tight. I just want it to be pretty snug. I'll carve off a thin layer. And I, we'll see if that's enough. Oh, I need to carve off the corners a bit. Okay, that looks like that fits in there. So there's one side, or one end, and we'll get the other end. All right, so that's essentially the top box. Uh, I'll add another layer of the lid, so I'll take one more lid, carve off the lip so that it can set right down on there. Huh. Or maybe I'll just put it on there and seal it with foam around there. And my thought was to carve off this edge so that, the, so that it basically sets down like that. Huh. Now that I see that, I could leave it like this, which gives me a tray on top can always carve it off later. I'm going to use a piece of this for the rest of this bottom area. So I'll cut it down to fit, get rid of that piece, match it up with that, and cut it to size. I can cut it along there. And my current plan is to wrap this whole thing with just clear packing tape. Now I'm going to put it together with some foam. At least I hope I will. And I will be carving these corners off more because if we measure from this, this three inch, and then this is three inch, so I can take off this much of this corner, which might help it go in there better um, and still have three inches. But I'll probably carve that a little bit later. First, I want to get these assembled. So get the first, the inside pieces first, I think. When the other one's sitting on top of there, the worst areas for cold or for heat to get out will actually be right here. This will be a little thinner and right here will be a little thinner. But the vast majority of it is going to be three inches thick. These two boxes are going to give me a couple hundred cubic inches more than the big ice chest that we have. And it's going to be thicker. I think it's going to do a better job. So I'm just going to go around the perimeter and then put it into place. Do that on both sides. Uh, come out the right spots when I push the piece in. Do 
do the same thing to the other one. And then I'm just going to press this into it. And try not to bow it too much. I just want to give it enough push to keep it in line. So ideally I would be filling all of those crevices so I did not get quite enough in there, but I'm going to use that for now and not add more. If I like it and it's not enough, I can always squirt some along there, but then it's hard to carve out inside these spaces. And I know I have a broken piece right here. I'm going to use a little bit of this to glue it into place. Okay. And I'll have to clean that up also. All right. Now, I can get the other one also. I'll try to get it a little bit more on the side instead of just in the corner. So you can see, this time I put it a little bit away from the exact corner. So then hopefully that will help it come out the sides a little bit more. Don't know that it will. Boy, that made kind of a smeary mess on that one. It doesn't take a long time for that to set up enough to take that off. We'll let that set up and see how it does. Going to do one of the side pieces and see how that goes. I want a very small amount, so I'm trying to go real slow. Here it comes. Okay, well, I have it all the way around. And yeah, it dripped a little bit right there, but that'll be okay. take the bottom off for right now so I can um, tape this part on there better. You can see that kind of oozing out a little bit, but it's not opening up a gap. So it's just filling in spaces. And we'll be able to put the bead for the bottom right in there to really get rid of any air space or air leakage. Okay, now get this side. So we'll go back to the other box now and get those side pieces on. Oh, I'm really liking this. And see how it's filling in along there. That's looking real nice. Putting it along the side instead of just in the corner, I think is turning out a little better. I think it's filling up that gap a little bit better. And it's skinned over, but it's still very soft still. Now get the side panels. it down. That way I get the height even. And as I mentioned, side to side I'm less concerned with. Okay, my blue tape clamps are doing well on this. This is looking good and skinning over nicely. In between uses, I'm just stuffing a nail in this thing. OK, 
Okay, lined up pretty well. I can tape the side ones right away. Well, now that I'm down to the last one, learning how to do this. So I'm putting it on this first side a couple of inches, then I'm squeezing it and pulling the tape lightly, not too hard because it'll cut right into the foam. It is leaving a little mark in there. But so I'm definitely making sure that it's on there firm, but I'm trying not to over tighten it, over squish it and damage the foam areas. There, got the two sides. Then this one is the one that gets a double top. So we could probably put that top together and just weight it down. But that's a heavy duty styrofoam box. Three inch sides. This will have a th uh, three inch top. The other one will have a three inch bottom or vice versa. It doesn't really matter at this point. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and glue two of the tops together. I don't think it's really going to matter which way we put this together. So we can either put it together this way, cutting off the flange, because I certainly am not going to try to carve it to meet that. Or we can put it this way, and then we've got a double lid, and one of them can work as a tray. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with that. So I'll go all the way around the perimeter, about an inch or so in. should have mentioned somewhere along here, and, and hopefully I've mentioned already, that I know that most people will not have uh, one of these big foam things laying around, let alone four of them, so that they could do this kind of project. Uh, I'm sure it could be done with sheets of foam. I saw somebody that did one for their fishing boat, I think. Anyway, for a boat, but they did a, their own custom one using sheets of the styrofoam stuff that you can get at like Home Depot or any of those places. And that looked great. But I decided I wasn't going to buy anything if I didn't have to. And I had, we have used these, uh, boy, we've used these an uncounted number of times for going shopping when we know we're going to get cold items because these, these uh, containers work really nice for that. You know, they were shipped to us with food in it of some kind, usually dry ice kinds of things. And we just hate to throw them away, just knew that at some point I would have a use for them. Well, this seems like it's going to be a near perfect use for it. Okay, so that will add a handle to the top that will be quite nice. And I'll have a tray. So this needs to set up. That's looking good. Okay, this was the first one we did. How is that doing? That's set up quite nicely. You know, it's still pliable but I also think it's about finished expanding. If I curve the blade a little bit, I think I can get that without curving away the sides very much. Oh, that's great. I will have to carve that out a little bit later because I need to wait until I get the tape off. I might have to use a different blade. This might fit right in there. I could just carve it this way and this way because I need to get that out to be able to get the lid in. There's another place here and here that's similar. But I think it's set up enough. I could take this out now. Oh, I don't need to take that out. I think it's set up enough that I could take this tape off and get the bottom one on. And when I put the bottom on, I'll put the sealer right in that groove. 
And then this bottom will be going back on like this. So I'll put a little bit of sealer there. And I could V this out a little bit so that it really gets in that crack. I'll do that. So I'm going to just give it a small chamfer. Yeah, then there's a small groove in there, and that'll give the place, the foam, a place to go up into. I'll do that on both sides. Wow, that looks nice. Yeah, so I'll put the bead on there, and that should seal it real well. Okay, and I can take these pieces off because they won't stick again. And it sticks pretty well to the foam one time. It doesn't stick again. And then this is going to go right there. So I'm going to go ahead and tape that along there so I don't have difficulties with it as I go. And keep any foam from escaping out also. It'll go around here and in these seams and one thin one in there. So let's get that taken care of. I think this is the last piece that needs to be foamed together. As long as I get that lined up. So I still may want to go ahead and run a bead down all of these other pieces, but that can wait until this sets up enough so that it's solid. So tomorrow we'll go ahead and finish all this out, get the tape off. Uh, this tape and then we're going to wrap the entire thing with tape to protect it To give it some so it doesn't chip away At least all of the outside edges, but all of this looks good. It should be a fairly good cold box now I've got it kind of figured out how I'm putting the strap material on to hold the uh, ice chest units, the, the foam boxes. So I'm going to use one of the bolts with the T-nut and then I added a much longer screw to one of the screw holes. So got the piece of scrap aluminum from earlier and I'm just going to go ahead and screw that in Then I'll drill the hole for this and then this goes in from the other side which leaves it flush on the inside. This was my tape mark for where I'd like to have that strap, but I'm going to end up with it down here a bit. I mean, I suppose I could capture it under the screw. Oh yeah, I should put the strap on there. Well, I can get this started. That'll hold this in place, and then I can drill the hole for the bolt portion. So I should do that next. So I can put the T-nut in from the other side. I'm going to go ahead and tap that T-nut in the hole. Okay, so then I can bolt that down. Now I need some of the strap material. It might not hurt to add a bit of spray glue to this. So I can go around. How far should I go around? So I want it to be pulling that direction. Okay, so I'd start with it here and then wrap it around and then come out that way. So it's got a full wrap underneath starting here, go all the way around again so that it's really holding it onto there. So it would take a lot of force to undo it. And I could definitely add a bit of spray glue onto there. It's not a bad plan. I can let that set for just a, a minute, get a little bit sticky. And kind of squish it on there with the glue and I'll pull it snug I 
Okay, and then that get screwed on like that. All right, that's actually bending the piece of aluminum even. All right, so that strap will go around the new ice chest and clip with a buckle and then it'll go to the other side. So we'll get four of those on. So it'll be one here, one here, and then two on the other side. So I want to make this long enough so I can put the buckle on this side. Uh, that way the corners are helping hold it as far as force. If I put the buckle directly in line, it's just pulling on the buckle. If I put it around here, I think it's pulling on this corner and then the buckle. So I'm pretty sure it'd be much stronger this way. So the buckle will be able to hold more on this side than if I put the buckle here. So anyway, I'm going to put the buckle here. I need enough to thread it through the buckle uh, and a little extra. So I'm going to go all the way to here. That way I have plenty of extra. And on the other side, I'll go all the way to here. So I'll, each one of them will be considerably longer than it's needed. But that way I've got quite a, a bit of slack in case I'm wrong. And I can always change them out. But so I'll cut it this long. So I'll mark it with the tape. Then we'll cut it with the little uh, heat knife thing. And I'll cut this at this spot. And then I'll make three more of them the same length. So I'm just using this little guy again for cutting does a really nice job. It cuts and seals it all at the same time. And the heat up only takes a couple of seconds. So I'll hold it both sides. And cut right through. Yeah, it gives a nice sealed in at the same time. Okay, so I need three more of them this same length. And of course you could cut it with a pair of scissors and then uh, melt the ends with a lighter. That's what I've always done before. And then I remembered I had this for a different project. Now I'll shield it. I keep my fingers off it at this time. Okay, we've got very strong straps. Do the same to the other side. Go install this back into the van. And we haven't really decided if we want to have them this direction or turn 90 degrees. They're almost square, so it's not a huge difference either way we go because this will go flush to there and it's just a little tighter here and leaves about an inch gap along here. If we go this way then flush here it just leaves us a, a one inch bigger gap on that side. So I don't know that it matters at all. Okay and some kind of ratcheting buckle may have been a better choice but I can change it out at any time. But let's get the second one on there. Stack this one right on top. Well, there's the coolers so far. I do think I'll add the non-skid uh, shelf liner stuff. Um, we have it under our cutting board and we put it various other places. I think I'll add a layer of that on the bottom platform and between the two of them. I don't know what kind of volume of cold things we're going to need ultimately uh, because again we'll have lots of freeze-dried stuff but I do like ice. I like lots of ice. I like cold packs uh, so we'll be able to keep that in the bottom. That's what we're hoping to do is that this bottom one, at least on this first trip, the, the road trip, not the camping trip, 
is going to be dry ice. So next I want to work on the curtain area. So I need, I've got uh, two days basically to get some kind of curtain area uh, between the front area and the back area. So let's get that going next. This next piece is just a quick review on how the ice chest worked for our Texas road trip. Our freezer and refrigerator boxes. I videoed these as I constructed them. It really worked well. We had dry ice in the bottoms for our freezer and then ice up in the top as the refrigeration. And when some of that would melt or we'd give it to number one son, we'd take some of the ice out of this one and put it up into that one. I think we bought a bag of ice once for this at Bucky's because I like ice in my drinks and things. And we bought dry ice so we could bring some ice cream home from Texas with us. We used the ice chest and freezer extensively. So that's the update on this. I don't know what we've already shown you on this. This was one of the sections of the ice chest. We used it for our trip to Texas and back, and it did get beat up a little bit on the inside, and I thought it might. And we'd planned ahead of time for adding a layer of plastic to the inside. I bought a pack of these flexible cutting boards, and I'm just cutting them down so that they fit the sides. We're going to glue them to all of the interior surfaces to help keep these from getting dented so fast. And I really don't care if it gets a dent in it, but I don't want it to get torn up and then start having the little pellets of styrofoam floating around and getting loose. So I want to keep it contained. So we'll cut these out and get them glued in. I've got three of these cut, and then I'll need to cut a piece for the bottom, which will actually be two pieces, and then we'll spray glue this thing together. Now I've got one more of these to go, and just line them up. And, then, and one side has more texture than the other, and I find if I want to draw a line on it, if I use the textured side, that works pretty well. Then it has a curved bottom and I'm just cutting that off with this. All right. There we go. That's nice. And now I need a piece that fits in the bottom. Or again, two pieces. Okay. All right, so that fits in the bottom, and then I need another strip right there. No muss, no fuss. Okay, so I've got, I mean, it's hard to see them because they're basically uh, translucent, kind of frosted, but I've got the all the pieces in there. Now, we'll use these for templates for the other one, to make sure that the get those and then we'll glue these into place and then this is the one that i used as the freezer uh, it has two layers of foam on the bottom so it has the bottom of the container itself and then another inch and a half so it's three inches thick of foam on this bottom edge it's a lot of foam down there good insulation it's three inches everywhere so now let's check these to see how, oh yeah I need to need to take the thermometer out so I added the thermometer through the case which was really handy to be able to check the temperature inside the refrigerator and freezer section as we were traveling and we did have one freezer section this bottom one because we filled it with dry ice since we weren't going to be sleeping in the van I felt comfortable putting dry ice in here because anytime we were in the van uh, the fans were running if you were going to sleep in it I'd be concerned about all of that dry ice and all that carbon dioxide because it's heavier than air so I would probably make sure this was more sealed and I'd put an exhaust tube out of this draining to the outside to drain off any of the carbon dioxide so it doesn't build up in the van. But that's a separate issue. 
we can check this to see if it fits the same as it does on the other one. Looks good. I can use these same ones for my template for this one. So I'll mark those out on the plastic before I glue these into place so I can still have the, that. I'll do that and then we'll come back. Well, to make this work, I'm going to try to do it, I don't know, like one piece at a time, I guess. I'll spray this, I'll spray that, and we'll put them together. So I'm going to use Super 77. I did a test with this uh, plastic against a scrap piece of foam earlier, and it seemed to adhere very well. So I'm going to give that a whirl with this and see if I can get them to line up properly. And go heavily around the edges. Wow, I cannot even see that I've sprayed anything on there. Let's see if that'll work. Yeah, I can't even see the spray on there. I know it's on there. I'm going to let that get a little bit tacky. And now we'll try to get it in there and line it up in one shot. Oh, I did not get it right. It's not far enough in. Well, shucks. Stuck very well, but I didn't get it all the way in there. Hello. That was a quick day. So I glued that piece of plastic, but I didn't get it lined up. So I'm going to have to trim that top edge, and the bottom will just be a little bit away. That's not going to be a problem down there. Let's go ahead and see if we can get the other side and see how we can get it in there correct the first time. If I were doing hundreds of them, it would be easier because then I could make jigs. But when you're doing one, I don't like to spend too much time working on it. Okay, that one's better. That's much better. I can get the two sides. Now, still got to get the bottom. That will strengthen those sides a lot. Help prevent a lot of damage in there. I wish I'd have done that before we used them the first time, but I didn't. Didn't have time really, and I wasn't sure if it was going to work, and I didn't have the pieces yet. So I will have to trim this down a little bit because I didn't get it lined up, especially that first one. But as you can see, that's the plan. So I'll get the other one done, and then we'll tape the top edge. So we'll see you back when we're doing that part. So I tape the smooth side, and then I'll spray this uh, slightly rougher side. I'll spray that, and we'll put it in place. With the fold, I can spray one half at a time, so then I can actually line it up well. I'm going to coat the top edges, or cover the top edges, with some of the blue tape to protect it from overspray. So I can just fold this up, spray the one side, and then fold it in. That way I'll have perfect alignment. So I've got the entire inside lined with the plastic now, and then I'm going to use the packing tape or shipping tape, whichever, whatever you call it, and cover these top edges. I thought I had shown video, or I thought I'd taken video, of covering the entire outsides, but I don't find it anywhere. 
So what I had done was I had taken this tape and simply wrapped all the way around over and over, covered the entire thing with this tape to keep it from being able to be chipped at. And it's really done a nice job of it. I'll use the same tape and cover these top edges. Probably don't need to see it all. It'd be a lot less likely to get all beat up. I'm going to go ahead and take this and go around these edges. <laughs> and that will help strengthen that edge. So then the top will have this on there. We could use this as a tray uh, for some of our sandwiches and things, I guess. So, big difference. And this side has tape on it. So, we'll see how they do long term. But that will definitely strengthen that. Hopefully, it won't snap off that way. Well, that's completely finished. I forgot to put the thermometer back in the ice chest boxes. So, I'm putting them back in now. And it's just a matter of cutting a small notch out of that plastic that we just added and sticking it through. And then I'll put a piece of tape on there to hold it and to keep it from getting bumped. And a piece of tape here so that it again doesn't get bumped or hit when we're using the van. It's as simple as that. So get that on both of them and ready to put back in the van. This is just using the same holes I had before, of course. Get that started. And it's right alongside that plastic. So I'm gonna just push that plastic in a little bit and push the thermometer probe right in there. Go back in the van now. The non slip piece. Oh boy, having the non slip piece makes a world of difference. Okay, it's ready to use again. So we found by setting it up this way, it worked well for us for the road trip. I don't know if it's going to work for camping as well, but we had the top half of it being a refrigerator, the bottom half being a freezer. For the camping trip, we will probably have it all more refrigeration. I don't think we're planning on any dry ice for this trip. So we would just have lots of ice in here, which can replenish this top one. And with three inch foam, it should hold ice pretty well. In the long term, we'll probably put a refrigerator here. We have little refrigerators, so we don't have to buy that. However, we need a power supply. And that's what I'm not interested in buying at this point. I wanna be able to utilize it this way a little bit, find out what works and what we need. We'll see how we arrange things as we go.